in 1 Corinthians 13, it says this. It says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. What does that mean? These three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of those is love. Hey, to understand that, you've got to go all the way back to the beginning of that chapter. And it's like, it's like the writer is obsessed with love. It's like love must be really primary. Love must really matter. It matters so much that he tells us what love is. He tells us what love isn't. He tells us what love does. And he also tells us what love doesn't do. I guess so we'll know how to, to do love right, but also so we'll know real love when we see it and we'll be able to spot it as opposed to a fake. And what I'm spotting right here in front of me is the real thing. Cynthia and I have been praying for our kids to find their spouse, that it would be a godly woman or a godly man. We had to pray pretty hard for Colton. And uh, God answered our prayer. She's sitting right there. On December 2nd of 2020, she went out with our groom. We had vetted him thoroughly through online research. <laughs> we decided she should go to dinner with him. About 30 minutes after Kels told me she was sitting nervously in the parking lot outside of, out of all choices, Colton, Boomer Jack Sports Bar. <laughs> I sent my famous, do you need anything from the grocery store text message. And I got back, I'm good. <laughs> Two and a half hours later, I thought I should check in again. And she texted back, so far, I like this boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you. You look so good. <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> I you miss you great too. too. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Colton, uh, he's not a big talker. He all of a sudden was just going on and on about this girl, Kelsey. And you could just tell it, he was just overflowing with joy and, and excitement and just, uh, he couldn't contain it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, yes, I feel like, I, like I don't want to touch her. I'm not going to break her <laughs> here. I don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> and it's really been funny being the father of the bride. Uh, people would come up to me and say, all right, Scott, so how are you feeling? So how are you doing? And I'm like, like, I feel great. It's Colton. I've been praying for this guy since Kelsey was born. And to see how that happened uh, is like, I'm like, bro, you got her. Yes, go, y'all do this. I love you, I love you too. So I'm so excited. I knew from the very first few dates that I wanted to marry you. <laughs> and that has never changed. My love for you has only grown stronger since then, and I continue to fall more in love with you every day. You are gorgeous on the outside, but you are even more beautiful on the inside. The way you have compassion for others is definitely God-given and is something I truly admire about you. The first time I met you, I was like, yeah, she's pretty good. After that, Colton, he's like, how about this, huh? She's pretty special. The day we FaceTimed when she just got engaged, she was glowing and gorgeous, of course, but even more than that, she seemed so sure. She showed so much confidence and peace towards Colton, and that's something that I'd always dreamed of for her. If anybody knows Colton, they know he is very detail-oriented. He researches a topic a lot. I think that's just been so sweet, seeing how he has done that with Kelsey and like pursuing her heart and like just being so intentional. You know, the, the definition of Kelsey, in my opinion, is, is grace. She's going to treat you like you're the most important person in the world. You've always known truth and you've stood for it. She will hold you to a standard of grace and remind you that you always have your faith 
and her friendship to lean on. He became uh, just a blessing to my life. Kelsey is choosing this guy. He's got to be incredible. He goes, I really like this girl, and I think she's actually pretty special. There couldn't be a better person I would ask for my little sister to marry in the entire world. You could tell how much he cared for her, how much she cared for him. Well, you're so adventurous and also you're so caring, and I think those two qualities are going to make an awesome life together. You make me want to be a better person every day and strive for new goals together. You push me to try new things and to do things I would never do on my own. <laughs> you are the best part of me, and I hope that I can give you the love that you have given me. Now, for my favorite memory, the day before we got engaged. We were over at the Byro's house and you came downstairs to kiss me goodnight. I was being my usual slightly neurotic self and I said to you, I'm a mess. You softly responded, you're my mess. I knew in that moment what love was. It was not all the picture perfect moments, but an unconditional love. In that moment, the tiny words of you're my mess spoke volumes. I felt safe and at home. I was fully known and fully loved. As Tim Keller would put it, to be loved but not known is comforting but superficial. To be known and not fully loved is our greatest fear. But to be fully known and truly loved is, well, a lot like being loved by God. At some point in this relationship, Colton told Kelsey he loved her. But that wasn't the first time she heard that. They have heard that their whole lives. Their moms, their dads, friends, family. But those, none of them invented I love you either. Before you were born, there's the voice of another, the voice of love himself, as he whispered to you, since before time began, I love you. And I am so thankful that I can say, in this marriage, to this room, that these two replied back, I love you too. Before they loved each other, they were loved and loved Jesus first. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace all the days of your life. Colton, you may kiss your butt. This relationship's been prayed about for a long time. And when it's right, you know it's right. And it just felt like you were always supposed to, to be here right now. And so I'm so thankful that God wove your stories together and that we're here tonight. We couldn't be more grateful and thankful to God for bringing you to Him and to our family because it's just a gift that you can only hope and pray for and something that only God can do. 